The Model Shop Live Scale Modeling Show is brought to you by Tenet Controls, makers of lighting kits, soundboards, and more. Tenet Controls brings your models to life. And by HDA Model Works, suppliers of scale model lighting products, detail parts, and complete model kits. Visit HDAModelWorks.com today. Well, hello there again, everybody, and welcome to episode number 111 of the Model Shop Live Scale Modeling Show. I'm your host, Boyd Crompton. Glad to be with you guys again this week. We've been off for a couple of weeks. We had a holiday a week ago, and we've had some uh, family things that we were doing around here, so it's great to be back with you guys this week. Uh, we just finished up our uh, big uh, spring build that we were doing as a group here at the uh, Model Shop community on the Google community page. And uh, we're going to be taking you over there in just a little bit and showing you some of the pictures that people have posted of their completed work. Unfortunately, uh, some of us didn't get to complete our uh, models by the deadline. We had a deadline of uh, June 1st, but uh, not to worry anybody. It's uh, just the whole thing was just for fun. So keep on chugging along on your models and post your updates as you go along. We'll all look forward to seeing your models when you finish them up. I didn't get to finish my own model, but I was working on my little Nelly kit as well, so I'll be working on that. Hopefully a little bit of time I'll have on it this week and get that finished up and post some pictures of that as well. But uh, we had a good time. We had a lot of uh, people that participated this year. It was a lot of fun. A wide variety of uh, modeling subjects that people worked on. And uh, the community, it's just nice to see the community is very active. We've got a lot of people uh, posting uh, all their builds on there a lot of stuff going on it's kind of tough sometimes in the spring it usually is people have a lot of things going on so I was kind of thinking that that might be the case and uh, but we're just happy to have people participate so don't feel bad out there if you didn't get your model finished on time and uh, as I said we'll look forward to uh, seeing what you guys have uh, uh, to show us a little bit later on uh, I've got a, a special uh, model kit that came into the uh, shop this week a kit that I've been wanting to get for quite some time we're going to do a out-of-the-box kit review on that tonight. This is the uh, uh, 112 scale uh, Atomic City Models Mercury Project uh, space capsule. It's not the entire rocket as a picture on the box here, but it's just basically the capsule up here on the top and the escape tower. Uh, it's a really nice kit. It's got a uh, fully detailed interior. This is a kit that's been out for quite a few years. I think it's out of production right now. Uh, I'm not sure if they're going to be bringing it back, but I was able to find one of these pretty easily on the internet. Uh, I had seen this kit over at uh, the uh, Cult TV Man uh, website, which is a popular online 
uh, site where a lot of us buy our model kits from, and it was kind of expensive over there. I wound up getting this kit uh, on eBay for quite a bit less, so they are, they are still out there. And uh, it's a really large model. It's a 112 scale, so there's a lot of detail that they packed into it. The, the main thing that interested me about it is that it comes with an in-scale uh, astronaut figure, and it's also got a fully detailed interior that you can do lighting and everything, so we're going to have a lot of fun. I'm not sure when I'm going to be able to get around to building it, but uh, when I do get to it, you guys will get to see that here. Uh, the other nice thing about it is it gives you some options for uh, uh, with the decals and some of the markings that are included that it gives you the option to build uh, just about any version of the uh, uh, series of capsules that they used in the Gemini program in the original space race. Uh, you can build the Scott Carpenter capsule, the Wally Shira capsule, the Cooper capsule, uh, Alan Shepard or uh, the Gus Grissom uh, Liberty 7 capsule and also the John Glenn uh, Friendship 7. So. It's a really cool kit, and you'll see when we take it out of the box here and look at it, it's really detailed and super cool, especially if you're into uh, real space kits. Uh, what we're going to do here, uh, first tonight to kick off the show is we're going to head over to our uh, Model Shop uh, Google community page, and we're going to have a look at what we've, uh, uh, some uh, pictures that people have posted of their completed uh, spring builds and some of the works in progress we've got. We've got a lot of activity going on over there. And then I've got an interesting little... Um, modeling tool that uh, a friend of mine emailed me about about a week ago it's a uh, cutting tool that's used for uh, cutting out masks and what it does basically it cuts out circles but it's a really interesting tool I've already gone ahead and ordered one of these when I get it into the shop I'll do a, a, a full review here for you guys but um, we're going to show you a little video demonstration of that uh, it's a little bit on the pricey side but if you're building a lot of models and you need to and you need to do a lot of masking this thing might be a really great uh, time saver for you and uh, myself I, I need to mask a lot of um, circular uh, shaped items especially building starship models and things like that so I'll, I figured it'd be worth it for me and it just uh, looks like it's super easy to use and it looks like it's a really high quality uh, uh, tool made out of metal and everything so I'll show you that here in just a little while meanwhile let me get my um, menu switched over here and I'll take you over to the uh, model shop community page and we'll have a look at what's going on over there let's see click on this and bring this up and uh, hopefully you guys are seeing the page here just kind of starting off in the middle here we have uh, uh, Omar here on the right who's been working on this uh, Gatchaman F1 jet this was a model that he built for the uh, spring group build he built a couple models for that and this is the first one this is kind of a work in progress picture. We're going to scroll up a little bit further and we'll see that he's got this one completed and some pictures of that. We've got uh, TJ Blackwell here that uh, worked on a couple of, built a couple of one 650 scale classic enterprise kits. Nice to see people are still building the old uh, original AMT kits. I still have a really, uh, there's been a lot of improvements in kits for those over the years but I still have a soft spot for the original AMT kits. And here we see uh, Scott Thompson. Let's check this out. He's doing a um, kind of a one-off uh, uh, kit bash of a sort of Miranda class mixed with the Kelvin timeline uh, version of a starship which is pretty cool you can see he's got the uh, original sort of reliant uh, layout here on the lower saucer and he's got some uh, warp engine nacelles from the uh, Kelvin timeline uh, enterprise and you can see it it's looking pretty good it's, it's fitting together pretty nice almost like it uh, looks like it was meant to be uh, done like that so I'm always interested to see some kit bash work people can put their uh, imaginations to work and uh, he's got a pretty good looking profile on that he's making some uh, you know modifications here and there it'll be interesting to see how that one turns out and uh, let's see we've got uh, some news on the uh, sci-fi front uh, for people that are interested in the original Battlestar Galactica television series, there's an auction house here in the United States that's going to be auctioning off the entire uh, collection of the filming miniatures from the original Battlestar Galactica television series, including the old gray lady herself, the, the Galactica. You can see she's looking gorgeous in this picture here. Uh, she really looks beautiful in these high-definition pictures. You can go to their website and you can download their uh, catalog in PDF format and it will give you a whole series of uh, really nice uh, clear high definition photos they have everything there from the Galactica to some of the hero uh, Viper props the original Cylon Raider uh, the shuttle 
some of the ships that were from the ragtag fleet that we remember seeing in the opening credits of the show every week. So that's fantastic. Hopefully when they're uh, sold, they'll be put on uh, some type of public display and not locked away in somebody's private vault somewhere. I always kind of think that these classic icons from sci-fi should be shared with um, everyone and remembered so that they can still uh, share them with future generations of people. So hopefully that'll happen. But she never looked better. It looks like they did some restoration work on it and... Uh, I'm still a, bi a big fan of the original design of the Battlestar. And uh, let's see, moving up here, we've got... Uh, here's Omar's um, uh, Gatchaman uh, F1 jet. It looks like he's got it finished in this picture here, so let's go ahead and have a look. You can see, as usual, Omar did a great job on this. Really nice paint job on it. And uh, the uh, Battle of the Planets was a really popular show. So he picked a really cool subject for his... Uh, our spring build subject was anything from uh, movies or television. So there was a lot of uh, you know opportunity to basically pick from a wide range of modeling subjects. This looks like a really nice kit. It uh, looks like it uh, went together really nicely for him and turned out perfect. Really nice job, Omar, and thanks for uh, participating and sharing your work with us. Here he's showing some of the uh, work he did on the details. So great job on that one, Omar. Let's see. Sometimes my um, page, when I refresh it here, it, it goes back to the top of the page. So we'll just kind of wander around here and see what we've got. We've got John Hunt that's uh, just finished up this beautiful uh, Enterprise D. I think this is, uh, I'm not sure if this was the, I don't think this was the clear version. I think John went in and uh, individually cut out all these windows that you see here, which on the Enterprise D, there's literally thousands of them. So you can always give somebody a big hats off when you see one of these finished up, folks. It's a lot of work and a lot of time and patience, but uh, you can you can do it. Just do a little bit at a time. If you haven't ever done one of these before, don't get discouraged about something like that. Just take your time and do a little bit at a time. Before you know it, you'll have them all done. There are some uh, various tools that us modelers use. For those of you who are new to this type of thing, you can use some small cutting knives, some small drill bits, some miniature files, and that's how you uh, basically cut out all these windows. But really nice job on that. She looks gorgeous. And let's see. We've got uh, Roger Ball. He's got his uh, speeder bike here. Let's have a look at this. Got some nice weathering going on there. Very nice. With the uh, background, it looks like a real shot from the movie. Great job there. Love the little miniature diorama scene here. Base scene below this. Not overly done. Just doesn't take away from the model. Just, uh, just right. Very nice. This guy's put in a hard day's work, it looks like. Pretty cool. Right. Mike Kovach here is uh, working on a uh, Adam 12 project and basically what he's doing is he's taking a couple of model kits and creating a car that uh, they don't make a kit out of so he has to do some custom work to create that here he's building the engine working on the interior got the engine going on there and some of the chassis work. Looking forward to seeing more of that progress, Mike. Got uh, Armando Della Cabada here, who's working on the uh, Zvezda Star Destroyer kit, the 12700 scale. This is a really big kit. You can see by uh, the size of this tower area alone here how big this kit is, just by uh, in scale with his hand there. But this is looking really good, and I'm really... Uh, impressed with the detail that they've put in on this kit. This is a Russian-made kit. As you guys know, uh, Ravel Germany is also releasing this same exact kit. I think it should be hitting the United States here anytime if it hasn't already. I plan on uh, picking up one of these myself and working on it. Looks like a lot of fun. As you can see, as if, you're, if you're going to light it, there's a lot of drilling to do on this as well. Not so bad because all the uh, holes that you need to drill basically are just round, you know, and then you'll, you can either you know, most people will probably do fiber optic lighting on that. 
looks really good. You can see he's starting to work in the fiber optics on that. Looks like uh, Gadgetron was at the um, uh, Wonderfest that they hold every spring in Kentucky. And let's have a look and see what some pictures he posted here. This is the uh, round two models display. They uh, usually at Wonderfest every year. For those of you who don't know, they'll most of the model manufacturing companies will will be there, especially the ones that produce a lot of sci-fi kits. And they'll usually have news about some of the upcoming new kits that they're going to have for the new year. Uh, everything I'm seeing here looks like we've already uh, kind of heard about. We've got some of the Star Trek kits here. We've got uh, uh, the uh, looks like they're going to repop the Reliant kit, the uh, the larger kit that's been out of production for a while. Got a couple new versions of the uh, Space 1999 Eagle. You can see off to the side here, and some new Batman stuff that's coming out. So that's pretty cool. A little bit more detail on that Eagle. So I'll be looking forward to those. Okay, uh, we've got uh, Alan Blind, who's been working on his uh, Starsky and Hutch Torino. And as he mentioned, he uh, started off on this build just uh, intending to build it straight out of the box, but then he decided about uh, halfway through that he's going to go ahead and start doing some lighting on it. So you can see it's looking really good here. He's got the... Uh, the headlights lit up here. He's got the little parking lights and the grill lit up, which is uh, interesting how he did that because this grill is basically molded solid, so he had to do a little bit of work in here to get that to show up. And he's got the uh, side marker lights lit up on this, so that's pretty nice. Should look really cool when it's done. Got the tail lights lit up there. Very cool. That's been a really popular model kit since it was released. More work from Mike doing the uh, Superman build uh, that he's doing for the CP101 Appreciation Group build. I had fun participating in that one myself. Here we got uh, Scott Hatchard, our very own Aussie Trekkie, doing some more work on uh, working on a U-boat this time. Let's have a look at this. He's doing a great job on the weathering of this. You can see he's got some uh, rust effects going on here. And... Uh, I'll point out that Scott has his uh, YouTube channel. For those of you who haven't seen it yet, it's called Aussie Trekkie uh, on YouTube. And uh, he does some really extensive videos showing you how to work with photo etch parts and basically all the modeling techniques that he uses to put these models together. He shows you uh, his, his method for doing that. You can see he's got like a little uh, algae water line going on down here that he'd use some uh, various uh, modeling mediums to produce that. Same thing with the rust and everything. Very realistic looking. Great job, Scott. He's uh, got several ship builds he's working on right now. This uh, German U-boat, a uh, couple of uh, World War II battleships in both uh, 1-200 scale and 1-350 scale. So I highly encourage you guys to check that out. Always some good information over there, especially if you're new to this type of thing and you're trying to learn about uh, these type of techniques. And let's see, moving down the line here. We've got uh, Paul Reese, who just finished up this uh, beautiful Tamiya 132 scale Corsair. That's a kit that I have on my bucket list as well. That's a beautiful kit. You can just tell by looking at all the detail. It's, I built the 132 Revell, and you can, I can tell right away by looking at these pictures, it's a far superior kit than the Revell kit, but it's just... Uh, beautiful love all the detail on the flaps and everything there in the cockpit very nice authentic looking paint job on it some nice weathering on the exhaust there and a little bit of dirt on the undercarriage there's a lot of things you can do if you're new to modeling that you can learn about to add that little bit of extra realism to your models that makes all the difference in the world Very fine example of a Corsair here. You can see the uh, beautiful detail on the uh, interior of the cockpit, complete with the uh, 
shoulder harness and everything for the pilot. Very nice job. And here's some more work from Omar. Omar is one of our busiest modelers on our forum. He's constantly building and uh, he's interested in many different subjects and always uh, he's always happy to share his uh, building techniques and answer questions and help other modelers out. Here he's working on the Cosmo Fighter from uh, the uh, Star Blazers television series. That's a very popular subject as well. Great looking design on this ship. Very nice job again, Omar. Let's see if we can get our page to refresh here. There we go. Okay, heading on down the line here. We've got a beautiful job on a uh, Gundam kit by Chris Farrell. And Chris is, uh, builds quite a few of those. Very, very cool looking. Here we have the uh, ME410B version built by Bob Busking. I watched Bob's video on this on his YouTube channel the other day. And uh, as you can see, Bob builds a lot of uh, aircraft models. And uh, I always enjoy these uh, World, War II, World War II German aircraft because the Germans had some really interesting... Uh, camouflage work that they would apply on their uh, aircraft and Bob's really captured that on this it looks beautiful as you can see he's done some uh, all the camel work here and he's got some weathering going on this you know a little bit of exhaust soot and some engine oil leaks and things like that that you would commonly see on these aircraft at that time as an extra touch of realism that we're talking about Beautiful job on this one. I noticed that he used the uh, the base that he's got for this is uh, from the uh, Mobius Flying Sub Kit, which really actually fits in really nicely with this model. Great job on that. He's got the pilots in there and co-pilot, navigator. Uh, they actually the Germans actually had a night uh, fighter version of this too. They had a full radar array on the front that they would use to try to intercept enemy bombers at night. Very good job on that one. Thanks for sharing that with us, Bob. And moving on down the line here, let's see if we can find some more of our uh, spring build participants that got their, managed to get their models finished here. Here we have more of Omar's work. Uh, this particular build was uh, he did two subjects for our spring build. As we mentioned, it was anything from uh, movies or television. So his uh, second subject, besides the uh, fighter jet here, was the uh, classic uh, Fun Dimensions $6 million man kit called, I think it's called Busting Out or Breaking Out or some Bionic Breakout or something like that, Bionic Bust Out. So this is our very own Colonel Steve Austin breaking through the uh, prison cell door that he was locked up in, and he did a great job on that. Uh, he mentioned, uh, Omar mentioned during his uh, build that um, <clears throat> some of these patches that were on the uh, uniform worn by uh, Colonel Austin were not included with the kit, and he was able to download those off the Internet and print them on his printer and add them, so he added some nice extra detail to that. This looks like another uh, ship from uh, Star Blazers that he's been working on. And here we have uh, Tag with uh, Tagamo Model Works working on the uh, new Mobius Batgirl kit. Now this is the large version of the kit, the uh, resin version. And he's not quite finished with it yet, but you can see he's been working on it. He's uh, basically started off uh, working on the entire figure, getting it all cleaned up, and then doing the uh, you know painting the face and some of the details, and putting the base colors down. And then in this shot here, he's just sprayed on the. Uh, uh, People might not be aware, but Batgirl's costume, she actually had sort of a metallic uh, uh, metal flake sort of finish on the uh, 
on whatever the Cosmo was made out of, and he's went ahead and applied that on there, and it's coming out really nice. He's still got a little ways to go, but uh, it's looking fantastic. I'm sure we'll see pictures here uh, before too long of the finished up model. And we have Bob Bruce, who also worked on another Mobius Batman kit. This is the Riddler. I think this is the newest release that they've put out in that series. Now, this is the smaller kit. Uh, as you can see, it says 1 8 scale there. Uh, they have a whole series of these figures. They start off with Batman and, and then uh, released Catwoman, and, and I think they have Robin out now. So there's an entire set of these that's going to be available. But uh, they're really nice, and the likenesses on the uh, faces are very well done. You can see... He did a great job on this, and that was uh, my favorite. Uh, I liked the suit that Frank Gorshin wore in that uh, original series better than the, the kind of leotards or whatever, the uh, jumpsuit that he wore. I think this, I always thought this looked cool with the uh, question marks all over it. I think you've got the option of either having the mask or the, uh, the hat. So, yeah, there you go. And that came out really, really cool. Big, Frank, big fan of Frank Gorshin and the Riddle, original Riddler character. Let's see. Uh, getting down here a ways. <clears throat> ah, we have uh, Lee Chambers, who worked on the uh, a couple of... Um, Models for uh, our spring build, which were uh, Terminator inspired. You have the uh, ter original Terminator T800 skeleton, endoskeleton, which he did some lighting and everything on that. That looks really, really cool. And then he also did a uh, diorama featuring the uh, aerial hunter killer machine, the flying machine that we saw in the movie Aliens and, or not Aliens, uh, Terminator 2. Uh, Judgment Day, I believe, is the first time we saw it. It may have been a, a little glimpse of it in the first film as well, as well I'm not sure. But uh, there's also available these uh, in-scale T-800 um, endoskeleton figures, so he created a diorama. I love the little pulses of uh, light that he's got coming out of these uh, guys firing their weapons. Uh, as usual, Lee is really good with lighting. He did a great job on this. And uh, you can see it was obviously a lot of work. He did all the... Uh, uh, using the uh, extreme metal colors here to give the realistic stainless and chrome look on his uh, figures and the, and the Hunter Killer. There may be some uh, more pictures of this here that we can look at. We'll see here in just a second. Uh, my page keeps going back to the top. Sorry about that, guys. Another uh, model finished up, as I mentioned, from Bob Busking there, the uh, ME-262 jet fighter. Here we have Mark Shu, who also participated in our spring build. He did the uh, Grandpa Munster kit. As you can see, that turned out really cool. He did some lighting on Grandpa's uh, uh, machine that he had down in his laboratory there. Great job on the face and the figure. Really nice work on that one. And uh, another project that he's got going on. Wish I wouldn't have to keep scrolling like this. It's probably making you guys dizzy, but uh, sorry about that, everybody. Uh, let's see. Very nice uh, Sea Harrier model done by the Geordie Modeler. Uh, our resident model kit news reporter, Gadgetron3000, posted this about the uh, Bondi has decided to go ahead and release a perfect grade version of the Millennium Falcon in 172 scale, so that's got a lot of people excited. That should be a really nice kit. You can see some pictures of it here. You can probably go online and look up some information about that. And being in perfect grade, it's going to be very, very detailed. Here we have uh, Dan Harris, who uh, also participated in our uh, 
spring build. He didn't get quite finished with his model, but uh, he's got a lot done here, as you can see. It's the original Battlestar Galactica Colonial Viper, which uh, I happen to have one of these kits as well. I hope mine turns out as well as this one. He did some beautiful work on it, doing lighting of the engines, the cockpit, and uh, it's turning out beautiful. I'm not sure if he's going to be still adding some weathering on this or not, but uh, even just the way it is, it looks gorgeous. Love the detail of that cockpit there. Got it mounted on a nice uh, swiveling mount so we can have it in different flight positions. Very nice job on that. And uh, a beautiful NX1, NX01 built by John Smith. A Bondi Y-Wing built by Greg Byron. And here we have uh, Chuck Brooks, who also participated in our spring build with his uh, version of the T-800, another Terminator-inspired build. This looks really cool. You can see, using these metallic paints, really just bring these things to life. He's got the uh, all the detail going on in there. Nice job on the teeth. This was the large scale. Uh, I believe it's an old Horizon kit. I think it's a vinyl kit. So, great job on that, Chuck. Very cool. And let's see here. I know there was a couple more I had spotted that I wanted to share with you guys. Beautiful job from Jeff Black on a classic uh, Battlestar Galactica. This is the, uh, pretty sure this is the Mobius kit. I really like the uh, nice and simple display base that he's got going on with that. Galactica never looked better. Good job on that, Jeff. As I said, I'm still a big fan of the original design. I think it's got a lot going on. It's uh, it still looks up to date even after all these years. You can see he did some lighting on this. He uh, probably has some type of internal battery power for lighting as he doesn't have any wires up to his base, so that's uh, very nice. Nice looking engines. Love what he did up here too. Got a little bit of light coming through there on the top. You can see he's an avid uh, sci-fi modeler. Got his beautiful Enterprise refit there and some other stuff. Thanks for sharing that with us, Jeff. And uh, we'll look at a couple more here. Looks like some of these are works in progress. We have a nice uh, Deanna Troy figure in 1-6 scale done by Star Siege Player. Aussie Trekkie working on his 1-350 uh, scale Battleship Bismarck, as I mentioned. You can check out those de very detailed videos on his uh, YouTube channel. As you can see, we're an active group here. A lot of uh, active modelers uh, who post a lot of uh, updates regularly, so there's always something new going on. Have John Hunt doing a uh, Klingon Vorcha cr uh, cruiser, doing some lighting on that. That looks really nice. Another uh, Y wing, and here we had uh, the heavy metal modeler with his uh, speed racer diorama. I love what he did with the base here. He's got the uh, speed racer figure as well, and he did the working headlights on the car. So that's really cool. You can see here's the car with the lights on. We'll have a look at this. Very nice. 
I've also got that kit here that I started on and haven't finished yet. Looking forward to getting back to that one. Oh yes, this was uh, done by uh, our friend Ian at Star Trek Props and Models. Uh, when I first saw this picture, I actually thought that Ian had done the uh, used the original uh, 1650 scale AMT model kit to do this really cool looking constellation from the classic uh, Star Trek television series episode, The Doomsday Machine, one of my personal favorites. But this is the uh, 1 1000 scale Polar Lights kit. And I must say that he did a really good job making this accurate. These, um, this, this battle damage and the uh, detail up here on the uh, warp drive engines is very, very close to the uh, way the original miniature looked on the original television episode, which they did use an old AMT model kit for, by the way. Uh, so that model kit had to have been basically brand new at that time. But uh, even the scorch marks and everything here, he's got it looking spot on. The classic tilted, uh, you know, kind of powered down, drifting in space look. Really, really like this. Great job on that. I hope to someday myself get around to doing one of these in a, in a 1350 scale. It seems kind of uh, terrifying to take a brand new 1350 scale kit and do that damage to it, but it's just such a cool subject. And... Uh, the Constellation, and that episode was one of my favorites of all Star Trek episodes. Even down to the detail in the back here where they had one of these damaged and the other one was still kind of intact. So he did a great job on that. Had me fooled. I thought it was the, uh, the large kit. Some work being done on the uh, Into Darkness model doing Azteking. And John Smith's working on an NX-01 here. So there you have it, everybody. That's an update on our uh, spring build. Maybe by the time we do our next show, there'll be some more uh, completed uh, pictures of the models completed. Hopefully I'll have mine done by then. I apologize for not having mine done as well. It's the first uh, deadline that I didn't meet, but I had a combination of uh, uh, a lot of client work going on here and a lot of spring honeydews that I had to do for my wife around the house, so it's been keeping me kind of away from my modeling bench a little bit for my own stuff, but uh, I'll get caught back up. Uh, what I want to share with you guys uh, here now is we're going to have a look at this uh, modeling tool that I talked about. This is the, put out by a company called Shadow Hobby, and it's a, uh, it's a circle cutter, basically. So if you need masks with a lot of circles, uh, you can create them yourself really easily, basically with one spin of this thing. Now, um, from what I've been able to tell, this thing will cut down to as fine as almost like a, uh, a lead pencil tip all the way up in size to about the diameter of the tool here you can see so it can go almost you know really tiny to like fairly large so it should cover um, just about all of your uh, needs as far as masks for models uh, I'm gonna play the little demo video of it here for you let me make sure I got the sound turned on I just think they have some music on there or something but I'll make sure you guys can hear that uh, so let's have a look at that real quick
Okay, well, I don't know about you guys, but that uh, that has all kinds of uh, uses written all over it to me. And as I said, I do a lot of masking and everything. You can find information about uh, this uh, product here on their website. You just go to shadowhobby.com, and uh, you'll find uh, the pricing and the availability. They also sell uh, extra cutting blades for this uh, little tool. As I said, it's a little bit pricey, but uh, if you do a lot of this type of work, I think it's worth it. So I went ahead and ordered one of these. And... Uh, when I uh, get it into the shop, I will uh, uh, definitely um, uh, share that. Uh, uh, we'll do a little bit of a kind of an out of the box uh, review for that with you guys and uh, show you how you know what we think of it. But you can see just based on the video there, it, it looks like it's super easy to use. You just basically slide the. Uh, it's got like a lockdown nut on there, and you just slide it to whatever diameter you want the circle to be. Lock it down and just start spinning away. Hold it down firmly on top of your masking material and just start cutting away so I'm pretty excited about that and as I said I'll share that with you guys when I get it into the shop here okay everybody it's time for a quick little break we're gonna come back after that and show you our out-of-the-box kit review for tonight this is the uh, project mercury kit from atomic city models and as I said this is an auto production kit but uh, uh, it's available online I, I found examples of it over on eBay and uh, Amazon for a pretty reasonable price so We'll have a look at that when we come back, everybody. Stay tuned and sit tight. Okay, back with you again, everybody, and I'm really excited to show you guys this kit tonight. As I mentioned, uh, uh, for you fans of real space uh, exploration model kits, it doesn't get any better than this out there. This is just fantastic, and uh, at 112 scale, uh, the detail in this uh, model is just outstanding, and I'm really happy that I was able to find one of these. Uh, I really wanted to get one of these ever since I first saw it. It's been around for a few years. It reminded me of a really cool... Uh, space capsule and G.I. Joe that I used to have when I was a kid. Uh, some of you guys out there might remember that. They had a really cool big huge uh, space capsule that the full size, I think the 12 inch tall uh, G.I. Joe guy used to sit inside of. He had the old uh, kind of tinfoil looking space suit and uh, I don't know whatever happened to that when I grew up and lost it but uh, I always wanted to have something kind of similar to that again and this uh, definitely fits the ticket. Um, as I mentioned in the open, um, this kit allows you to build um, several different versions of this uh, capsule which they used for uh, a couple of years during the uh, different phases of the space program we have the ability to build the Aurora version the Wally Shira version, the Cooper version uh, the Freedom 7 flown by Alan Shepard 
uh, the Liberty Bell 7 by Gus Grissom and the Friendship 7 by John Glenn. I haven't decided which one I'm going to do. I'm kind of leaning towards the Liberty Bell 7 from Grissom, uh, maybe as a little tribute to Gus Grissom, who unfortunately uh, was killed in the uh, accident they had on the launch pad for Apollo 1. And Gus had an unfortunate incident when on his mission with this uh, uh, particular uh, spacecraft, the uh, Liberty Bell 7, when it landed in the ocean, the uh, escape hatch uh, blew off, and they, they could never kind of figure out why. Uh, it just kind of blew off all by itself, and unfortunately the capsule sunk to the bottom of the ocean, and just, I think it was only just a few years ago, an exploration team went out and uh, looked for it, and they, and they recovered it, and it's been restored, and it's in a museum now. Uh, but interesting story behind all that, but this is a fantastic kit with just gobs and gobs of details. Let's go ahead and start having a look at it here. Um, as I said, the, the thing that interests me about it is that it, it comes with uh, all these different markings here. Uh, kind of hard to see in white, but you can see we've got all the different versions and logos that went on the different versions of this ship. Um, you've got Freedom 7, Liberty 7, Friendship 7, uh, Aurora, all the different markings and little warning labels and everything that go all over it. So they've got a really, really um, detailed decal set. Here you can see you have all the markings that go on the uh, retro booster pack on the bottom of the capsule. Uh, again, you don't get the, the entire Mercury Redstone rocket with this. You just get the upper part, you know, the capsule and the uh, escape tower. Here we have some gauges for the uh, interior of the cockpit, which I plan on doing a lot of lighting on that. That's going to be really fun. So that's really cool. Uh, the instructions are uh, kind of not what you're used to seeing as far as uh, uh, you know, a regular production kit. Atomic City Models is basically a garage model kit company, and I think they contracted out to produce these kits on a more uh, you know mass-produced version. But Atomic City Models is kind of known for garage kits. I had uh, one of the uh, kits you guys remember, might remember me building a while back was the uh, Studio Scale. A Klingon D7 kit from Atomic City Models, the big resin kit, and that was a garage kit. Uh, but uh, so the instructions for this are not your typical, you know, factory type instructions where everything is, you know, step by step and, you know, fully explained and everything. It's more of a garage uh, kit kind of instruction sheet. So you've got to, I would say, if you're going to take on a kit like this, you might want to have a little bit of modeling experience. It wouldn't be for a beginner, but uh, because there's some modifications you have to do to it, but. Um, Nonetheless, if you want to get one of these kits, you can always get it now and build it later if you're new uh, to building models, and you can just put it away until you're ready for it. But here we have some details about how these uh, markings get put on. The retro booster here, it's kind of hard to see here, but you can maybe see the all these little stripes that go on there, and it basically shows you this layout and how all that goes, so that explains that. The actual assembly instructions here get into uh, some details about... The capsules were um, reconfigured several times when they um, were doing the, you know, going through the, the Gemini program. They had, uh, I guess it was more Mercury and Gemini, but they had different versions where they moved around the hatch and the windows. I think my camera's gone out of focus, so I can get that back. Um, they they had different versions of these hatches and windows that were moved around and things like that. So this goes into details about how you can modify this and cut different parts and they give you little templates and everything to create whichever particular version of the capsule you're wanting to build so I think that that's really cool that they give you these options to be able to do that and this whole area here is just explaining some of that stuff um, here we have an up close of the uh, various markings that go on the uh, capsule itself depending on which version you're building and as you can see, this gets right down to every little detail, so it's going to be a very, very realistic and very authentic looking uh, model when it's finished up here. Some information about the detail on the escape tower and the uh, how to kind of scratch make your own. They had a, a kind of uh, some antenna structure in there for radio communications that it's not included with the kit, but you can create it using some wire and things, and they go into the detail about how you create all that. So that's cool. Some more notes on the capsule markings and then here you get uh, just kind of a blown up view of the um, parts that are on the various sprues and things like that they do give you a, a vinyl in scale astronaut figure 
so you can put your guy inside there depending on which version you're building you'll have to do some research on what his actual uh, flight suit look like uh, they in the early part of the program they were done in kind of a silver looking almost like tinfoil and then they kind of went away from that as it went on so I'm gonna have to see which one I'm gonna do and kind of figure that out as I go but uh, just some basic really basic assembly instructions you're gonna have to kind of figure some of this stuff out on your own but uh, it should be pretty straightforward uh, as I said you know ha having built several models I should be able to figure this out let's um, start looking at some of these parts just to give you an idea of the size let's take the main uh, capsule body out of the box here and show you that and uh, so you can get an idea of the scale get this opened up I'm telling you guys this is uh, really beautifully done here um, if you guys can see the detail on this and I'm just you know judging by the size of my hands we still have the cone that goes on the top and the retro pack and the heat shield on the bottom so this is going to be pretty large you can see you've got the open hatch there so that you can uh, view the full instrument panel and all the interior details you have your astronaut guy sitting in there you know probably make some kind of a really nice display base for this and have it sitting slightly tilted or whatever and uh, it'll be really really cool but the detail on the louvers and everything here that are on this uh, capsule the rivets it's just gorgeous and I'm not seeing any flaws whatsoever in this in this mold I mean this is just really beautifully done so that's gonna look fantastic a little bit of weathering on there a nice paint job and that's gonna be gorgeous let's uh, look at some more parts of the capsule here here we have the upper uh, structures part of the tower let's see we've got this piece here as you can see it starts getting a little bit bigger this kind of goes on something like that I'd say the whole thing is going to be close to uh, just the capsule itself is going to be close to a foot long and then with the uh, by the time you get the tower on the top of it it's going to be pretty big probably close to two feet here we have the uh, vinyl astronaut figure let's check him out and he's already molded in one piece and wow I mean guys the detail on this figure here is is outstanding and you can see all the stuff going on on this especially on the front I wish my uh, camera would focus a little bit better I'll be posting some still pictures of this a little bit later so you guys can see it but he's got everything going on here this is gonna be pretty challenging to paint all that but uh, we'll give it our best shot as you can see he's he's busy uh, flying the capsule there really nice I think there's a separate clear visor piece for his helmet and everything just a big old solid chunk of vinyl looks real good got some uh, vinyl accessories some of his air tubes and uh, communication wires that go on the astronaut figure Don't want to lose those put him back in the bag there and uh, we'll look at the uh, bottom part here which is the uh, heat shield and uh, you get the full retro pack detail with the uh, release uh, brackets and everything you can see part of that here detail on the side all the rivets and everything are on there smooth heat shield on the bottom really cool we have multicolored parts here. Some of these I'm not going to take out of the bag because uh, I don't want to lose anything in case anything's loose. There's a lot of really small parts. But here's mainly uh, detail parts for the interior brackets and tubing and wiring and all kinds of stuff. So this is a full-on exact reproduction of the, uh, of the capsule. Here we have some more detail parts. The outside of the capsule. Here is what they call the uh, rear bulkhead and the seat, or in space capsule terms, they call it a couch for the uh, astronaut to sit on. Got those little armchairs there, armrests, and the uh, interior detail parts. Whoops, a lot of detail parts on the um, rear bulkhead here, too. It's, it's all there. I mean, anything that was in the capsule basically is there. So I'm really, really impressed with this. It's not going to get any better as far as a 
space kit. Now here we have really interesting, we have all the control panels here and they were very thoughtful on this because they obviously knew people like me and others out there are going to want to light this. So all these really detailed control panels here are all molded and clear. You can see you've got all these little rocker switches and here's his helmet visor, the main instrument cluster here that would be in the forward part of the ship, the uh, various window hatches and ports depending on which version you're going to build, a whole row of uh, rocker panel and flip type switches there, indicator lights. So this is going to be a lot of fun to light that and get that all in there and when you look inside you'll be like looking at the real thing. So I'm really excited about working on that. Here we have some parts that are probably for the uh, uh, escape tower uh, molded in red just like they are on the uh, box art. It's beautiful bright red. Not sure why they molded the capsule hatch in red but uh, maybe that maybe it was red on one of the versions I'm not sure but uh, we'll be doing ours in black and everything. Uh, but you've got this detail here so if you didn't want to paint it you, didn't have, you, you don't have to but we'll probably paint it. But you can see a lot of cool stuff going on there too. I mean a lot of detail all the struts and the girders that make up the whole uh, assembly. That's going to be a pretty big uh, uh, part of the model when it's finished. Everything on this is large scale. Let me see if there's anything down below here underneath this cardboard. No, nope, I think that's about it, guys. So, But anyway, if you're a, uh, a fan of real space vehicles and space exploration vehicles from the 60s when it all started, this is the kit for you. This is just a really awesome kit, and I'm not aware of any other uh, actual... Uh, capsule kits that are this detailed and at, at this large of a scale. I know they do make some uh, some of the Apollo uh, versions, but they're not this big and they're not nearly as detailed. I don't think they have the full interior in them. So, and again, this is uh, very historic because it's it's the early part of the uh, space exploration program and that's it's always fascinated me. I grew up in that time period, so I'm really pleased to have this kit and really looking forward to working on it. So, I'm not sure when I'll get to it. Hopefully, uh, I won't be able, won't be too long. I'll be able to get started on it, and I'll share that whole thing with you guys here on the uh, show and on the TrekWorks channel. So, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this. Now I've got to figure out how to get it all back in here, but I'll figure it out. But anyway, here's a look again at the capsule itself. Just absolutely gorgeous. I love this thing. It, it's bringing back some really good childhood memories already. And uh, you can see that uh, they, whoever created this kit, uh, had a wanted to pay a really nice tribute to this program because they put in a lot of effort to produce this. So there you have it guys. There's our uh, Atomic City Models 112 scale uh, Project Mercury model kit and uh, there's the box art again. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing that. We're going to uh, take another quick break, break here and we're going to come back and do our uh, shout outs in our question and answer session for tonight's show so we'll see you with that in just a couple seconds everybody meanwhile i'll be trying to figure out how to get this thing back in the box be right back
Okay, back with you again, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the uh, out-of-the-box kit review on the uh, Project Mercury kit from Atomic City Models. I will uh, post a link to that, uh, 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 some information about that kit on the Model Shop Google page for anybody who's interested in finding one of them. Like I said, you can go on eBay or on uh, Amazon and find these at uh, fairly reasonable prices. Uh, they were pretty pricey kits when they first came out, but it uh, looks like they're still uh, some of them floating around out there, and hopefully... Uh, if that supply runs out, they'll be reproducing those again, and people will be able to get their hands on them. If you're a real space fan, that uh, doesn't get any better than that. Like I said, I've, that's been one of my grail kits for a while. So, uh, And also, hats off to everybody that worked on our uh, spring build, group build this year. Beautiful work on your kits, guys. And like I mentioned at the top, uh, don't be disappointed or anything or, or worry about it at all if you didn't get your kit finished on time. This was strictly for fun. So keep on plugging away, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing your kits when you get them finished. Okay, so uh, I'm guilty of that thing myself. I didn't have as much time, you know. Like I said, I kind of was thinking about that when we did the uh, decided to do the spring build. It gets kind of busy for a lot of people in the spring, so no worries on that. Uh, we'll be making an announcement here in the next couple of episodes on what our next group build is going to be. I'm leaning towards another 48-hour um, build. We'll probably look at maybe around uh, maybe end of June, July somewhere, maybe mid-July, something like that. We'll try another 48-hour build and pick out a subject and things like that, so... People seem to really enjoy that. Time now to uh, head over to our um, shout-outs and our Q&A session for tonight. So if you, any of you uh, people out there watching have any questions about modeling or anything we showed you tonight, uh, you can fire those up. And uh, either myself or somebody here in the uh, chat group can uh, answer that for you. Uh, let's see. First, we've got Fubar Model Yard with us tonight. James Schulenberg, PJC 2.0, Omar, uh, George Volkowski, Mark Shu, Phil Spruworks, the captain. Uh, Adam is here tonight. Adam Corville, Triskelion. Nice to see you, Adam. I'm sure Adam enjoyed seeing that uh, Mercury capsule kit. He's a big fan of uh, uh, original space exploration vehicles. Uh, we've got uh, Jim Clark, Space Pirates Hobbies. Um, Alpha Trion 92, Mike Kovac. Van Diemens, Land Model Bench. Uh, Federation Shipyard, nice to see you, Dennis. Um, the Captain, DLC Model Builders. Uh, I saw a post on our um, group page over there that Armando, our friend Armando, there was under the weather for a few days and had to, who's a doctor himself and had to spend a little time in the hospital. I hope you're okay, Armando. You never know. Glad you're doing better and glad to see you back on the bench. Uh, we've got uh, Greg Bryan. Uh, let's see. Brian Knowles. James Schulenberg. Shannon Freeman. Jonathan Milbury. Barak13, who says his real name is Gary. Nice to have you with us, Gary. Outsider238. Jonathan Milbury says, just uh, speaking of space, he just watched the International Space Station go over. Yeah, that would be pretty cool to see. Thomas Johnson. Paul D. Tomaso, Mark Buchholz. Yeah, if you guys are here in the chat, uh, make sure you type something in the chat thing so your name pops up so I can give you guys a shout out. Don't want to miss anybody. Hawk Lynn. Who says I'm Eric I don't know if that's Eric Hawkins or not NASCAR uh, NASCAR NBI, NASCAR and Broncos fans nice to have you with us Ted Pelzini I hope I'm saying that right Ted Pilzini is asking where you can find Aztec decals for the 1,000 scale U.S. Reliant. I believe those, I believe uh, round two makes that set. Uh, you should be able to find those online um, or either at round two's website. Unless they're out of production. Hopefully they're not. That seems to come and go with those guys. Uh, Robert S.
Oh, Robert's one of my clients. He's the one that I built the uh, Aztec Special Classic Enterprise for. Glad you're enjoying that, Robert. He said he's, he says he's taking some, uh, his friend took some high-definition photos of that and will be sending them my way. Well, I appreciate that very much, Robert. John Petrie from England is here with us. Uh, Dadnator24, Rick, nice to see you, Rick. JD, We've got Calvin Sweet with us tonight, 2000 SPQR. Uh, JC Model Works, Brian Knowles, uh, Rascal, Howdy. <laughs> Rascal, oh, that's Howdy Boyd. Okay, Rascal, nice to see you, Rascal. Robert Pauza. Eric Hawkins is here with us. He's asking if we had any news from uh, Wonderfest. Earlier in the show, Eric, I showed some pictures that were posted on the uh, um, Google page uh, by Gadgetron, who was at the show. and It didn't look like there was much new. He had a couple pictures of the Round 2 booth, and everything I saw there were um, uh, stuff that we've already seen. But I'm sure it was still a good show. That's, one on, that's on my bucket list, too, to make it out to Wonderfest one of these years. Doug Schramm is here with us. Red Shirt Forever. Dan Harris. <laughs> JC Model Works says he's ready to watch paint dry. Yeah, that's unfortunately that's part of model building there, JC. We've all gone through that. Um, for those of you out there who are waiting on any news on the uh, Fiesta model show here in San Antonio, I still haven't heard any word on their official date, but uh, uh, they, they usually release that uh, before we hit summer, so hopefully I'll get some word on that for you guys that are planning on attending again this year and having our little get-together so you guys can start planning on the date. I'm really looking forward to that. That's going to be a lot of fun. sure I'm not missing anybody here. Looks like we had a nice uh, crowd in our chat session again tonight. Mark Shu was saying that the HBO series From Earth to the Moon was a good show. Yeah, that was great, Mark. One of the best series I've ever seen. Uh, that was uh, produced by Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg, and Tom Hanks is a huge uh, space exploration enthusiast, and uh, they made sure they got all the details right on that. I was really impressed with the uh, accuracy and the uh, amount of detail they paid to everything on that, and they had some great actors in each episode, too. Each episode was about a different part of the uh, space program. It was very inspiring to watch. I wish we would uh, get back to more of that in real life start off by going back to the moon and then on to Mars. Hopefully we'll see that in our lifetimes. Um, I think I've gotten through pretty much most of the people here. As I mentioned, um, make sure you type something in, guys, if you're here watching. We don't want to miss you. Roger Ball. Nice to see you, Roger. Uh, some more people popping up here. Gadgetron 3000. Our Gadgetron, I want to thank you for uh, being our kind of in-house roving reporter. You've always got some good information that he shares with us on uh, modeling news and things like that on our page. New kits, new tools, uh, just things that are going on. He seems to always be on top of that. Mark Buchholz. Fubar Model Yard. I'm not sure. Hopefully I'm not repeating people here. Doug Schramm, Barry Steinledge, Leona Timber Company, Big Stats, <clears throat> a 
Roger Ball says, for anyone interested in looking for Mercury spacecraft kits, uh, Horizon models out of Australia is issuing new kits in 172 scale. So there you go. Alpha Trion 92 is asking, so what's happening with the model makers from Star Trek The Motion Picture doing a new refit? Well, uh, last I uh, heard from Paul Olson, he's, uh, they're, they're continuing their fundraising program. He just, uh, as you know, he lives over in the uh, UK, and he just spent a couple of weeks over here in the States visiting with some people, trying to raise uh, uh, sponsorship and talking to some people involved with Star Trek, and there's supposed to be some, uh, some more news about that coming out. They're they're still trying to make it happen, as far as I know. Uh, SRS Prototyping LLC says he is new to the show. I'm assuming it's a he. It could be a she. New to the show, but have been watching your other videos. I have viewed some great techniques and builds. Thanks for helping. Well, that's what we love to do here. Um, it's all about... Uh, you know, helping other modelers and maybe inspiring some people who are new to modeling or have left it, left it for a while and bringing them back and getting them involved in the hobby and hopefully joining our community. Uh, a lot of fun people to hang around with. As I said, you can um, post on the page pictures of your work and share information or ask questions, and there's always a kind individual there who's willing to help you out and uh, maybe has experienced already building the model that you might be currently working on and can give you some tips to help you... Uh, have a more enjoyable experience um, when you're building your models. Also, a lot of news about products and things that are out there. As I said, you guys saw one of the things we always are looking for, you know, tonight, that little masking cutting tool. Um, a lot of the tools that we use are not quite as expensive as that. So, you know, you just kind of buy a little bit at a time and uh, get what you need to start with and then kind of adding some of those specialty tools later on as you go. And pretty soon you have a pretty nice little setup for working on models. PJC 2.0 says, "Have I ever built a NASA space shuttle?" Yes, I have. I built the, uh, I built part of it on one of the shows here a while back. Uh, it's the big Revell kit. Um, can't remember what scale it is, but you know, it's the biggest one they make. It's it's huge. It's uh, like, it's like a little bit over a, almost two feet long. Uh, I built it as the Endeavor. You can see it on my uh, Truckworks channel. There, it, there's some video of it on there somewhere. Um, had a lot of fun with that built it with the open you know it was the kit that has the open hatch on the top and it has the kind of telescope looking thing and the manipulating arm and the little astronaut guy had a lot of fun with that did some lighting on it I uh, did some of these rockets uh, from the AMT man in space kit I still haven't finished the Saturn V we showed some of those rockets being built here on the uh, on the show here last year on a couple of the episodes and that's a nice little kit for uh, uh, which gives you you know almost every rocket they had starting off with the uh, redstone all the way through the you know Saturn V very nice kit and of course there's that massive uh, 172 scale kit I think it is of the uh, Saturn V from Dragon Models that's out there. I think it's out of production now, but you can still find it. It stands about five or six feet tall. <laughs> so that's pretty awesome. Nice thing about that is that you can just stand it in the corner of your room and it won't take up that much room. John Bennett's here with us. Nice to see you, John. His question is, does anybody know if Round 2 plans on releasing the cargo pods for the Space 1999, Space 1999 Eagle kits separately? I'm not sure about that, uh, John, but 
maybe uh, an email to round two might answer your question. Phil of the Sprue Works is asking about uh, what was the name of the spaceship from uh, Forbidden Planet? That's the C 57D Space Cruiser. As you can see, I've got the right behind me here, I've got that large scale kit that I plan on building one of these days. Thomas Johnson says, is anyone else here disappointed at round two's announcement of the 1,000 1, scale Defiant? I, I hadn't heard anything about that, Thomas. Were they planning on doing a 1,000 1, scale Reliant or Defiant kit? That'd be a pretty small model, I would think. Shannon Freeman says he saw a, a video in June addressing the cargo pods for the 1999 Eagle being sold separately. So there you go. There's a possibility that's going to happen. A one on uh, Gadgetron 3000, who's our roving reporter, says the 1 1000 scale Defiant is coming soon. No, I hadn't heard anything about that, but uh, hopefully they'll come through. Round two's had some problems in the last couple years with announcing kits that they're going to put out and suddenly uh, a few months later they decide to cancel it. I'm not sure what's going on with that but uh, uh, a 1 1000 scale Defiant is going to be pretty small. It's probably going to be something like maybe 7 or 8 inches long. be nice to have it I guess it would be in scale with your other uh, one 1,000 scale kits, uh, starships that you've built. <laughs> Rascal says he wants to do the K-7 space station one 1,000 scale. That would be uh, pretty good sized. JC Model Works says he thinks it's time for a production 1350 scale Reliant. I'm right with you on that, JC. Uh, as many of us are, we've all kind of been chiming for that for a long time. I know that they've, um, uh, Round 2 Models has taken uh, polls that they put out and asked modelers what they want, and that one's always scored right at the top. Maybe they'll surprise us one of these days. That and a, I'd love to see a, a 350 scale uh, production uh kit of the original Klingon D7 as, as well as the Katinga to go along with the, uh, so we had a adversary ship to go along with our 1350 scale refit model kits. Back uh, in, the, in the 60s when AMT released the, uh, the first kit they produced for Star Trek was of course the Enterprise and it wasn't very long before they realized they had to have a companion ship and then they released the Klingon D7 so hopefully Something like that will happen again. Leona Timber Company is asking about the upgrade parts for the 350 refit. They are very close to being ready. Those are going to be coming from HDA Model Works, Leona. And last I heard from Jerry, he's getting very close. He had to, you know, those are they they had to do the masters, and then they're going to they're, they're going to produce them in 3D printed form. They're they're not going to actually be molded. So each part is going to be 3D printed and he's been getting all that together as far as uh, you know how to 
mass produce those. It, t it takes a little time, but uh, they're going to be coming out very soon. Um, Outsider238 said he, he heard that Mobius is releasing a glass seamless bubble for the lot. Yes, they are. I did hear that one. The uh, Mobius Lost in Space um, B9 robot kit, they are going to release a completely one-piece clear uh, dome for the uh, bubble on the top, which will be nice. They were also supposed to release a 132 scale chariot and uh, space pod that was in the same scale as their big Jupiter 2 kit, but that never surfaced either. It was supposed to be a two-pack combo kit. I was looking forward to that because I'd like to have that to go along with my Jupiter 2, but have yet to see that one. That's been a couple years now, I think. Thomas Johnson says they're going to be releasing a 1-200 scale battleship World War II version of the battleship Yamato. That will be huge. Yeah, there's a real trend in um, in the ship model companies that producing these 1-200 scale kits, and they are absolutely gigantic uh, because you can get so much detail in there. And they found that there's a market for it, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see all kinds. I'd love to see a some kit manufacturer do a 1-200 scale Titanic. That would be a grail kit for me, too. Um, as far as I know, uh, Space Pirate Hobbies... Uh, as far as I know, Jerry is going to be doing his, his own printing in-house. For the parts that he produces. Uh, the examples that he sent to me are just absolutely fantastic. They're, you guys are going to be really happy with them. And, I mean, you, you guys all know Jerry by now. He's a perfectionist, and uh, he does it right. He does his research, and uh, they should be at a really reasonable price, too. So more, more goodies for our refits. Another reason to build a have to build another one. Paul Di Tommaso is asking a good kit for the USS Reliant. Well, round two makes the one five three seven scale version, Paul, and uh, it's been out of production for a while, but it's coming back. That's the best kit, as far as production kits go, of the Reliant that's available right now. I should be getting my uh, uh, 1350 scale kit back pretty soon from Elliot Brown, for those of you guys that might be curious about that. I heard from Elliot uh, not too long ago. He's hard at work on it, making some uh, uh, changes and making some photo etch parts and possibly doing some casting to uh, replace some of the parts that are not accurate and make it easier to do lighting. So uh, I can tell you uh, Elliot's a really uh, intense guy as far as the detail he puts into these things. So whatever we get in the end is going to be worth the wait. As soon as I get it back, I'll share everything I've got with you guys and let you know uh, how to get a hold of Elliot and, and get the parts for yourselves for those of you who uh, uh, have uh, gotten that kit and are working on it. Dad Nader says he's out of here. He's got... Uh, some ribs. I got some ribs waiting for me too, Rick. Can't wait to get to them. Oh, I definitely will, Omar. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm uh, waiting for that myself.
Robert S., that'd be a question to, to contact Jerry uh, and ask him uh, directly. You can contact him through his website at hdamodelworks.com. There's a, a link on there uh, to contact him for his email. He could tell you that uh, more than I could. He, he likes working on those kind of special projects, so he, he'd probably be interested in that. Okay, one more round of questions, everybody. It's uh, coming up on about an hour and a half here. Um, so we're going to call this a wrap for tonight. So if anybody has any final questions they want or comments, go ahead and fire those off. Um, I'll mention that uh, we're going to be, you know, our usual schedule here. We're going to be off next week, and then we'll be back the following week after that for another show. Um, as I said, we'll be catching up on the... Uh, activity on the page our google community page and if you haven't visited the page check us out it's under the model shop uh, google community um, it's easy to join up if you haven't joined already you can just uh, basically sign in if you've got a google account and you're on the page and you can start posting away we'll be glad to have you uh, and we're into you know uh, people think we're a sci-fi only uh, you know the, the model shop uh, uh, community that I created is basically for for any kind of modeling so you'll see when you get on the page that we've got any kind of modeling you can imagine going on we've got uh, you know military automotive aircraft sci-fi um, anything under the sun so it, there's something there for everybody people of all ages all skill levels and so we'll be glad to have you and then join us on um, Sunday nights for our, our chat session we have it was always a lot of fun We've got Kenny with Sci-Fi Fantasy here tonight. Nice to see you too, Kenny. Been watching your uh, videos on your modeling progress over on your YouTube channel. Good job. Thank you, JC. Yep, I had a lot of fun building that uh, Bismarck. Well, hopefully uh, by the next time I'm on with you guys, I'll have some more work uh, done on my uh, little Nelly. I want to get that finished up for my spring build. and uh, uh, So I, I've got two weeks to do that by the time we do our next show, so hopefully I'll have that done. And then I, I want to start my uh, video build series on my channel of the, uh, turbine, the Chrysler turbine car that I showed you guys uh, uh, a while back uh, I've got a little bit of work done on that but I want to get going on that too but uh, the model builds in the shop for my clients come first these days guys so I'll do what I can okay you guys take care uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks and until then I hope you guys get in some modeling time and I'm looking forward to all your updates thanks for joining us again tonight we'll see you in two weeks good night everybody